How's everybody doing? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Rosalino TV. Now, this is a little bit different of what I've been doing so far. That's terrible. Hello everyone to episode number three of Rosalino TV. Uh, this is part of what I'd like to start doing on this channel. I spend a lot of time commuting, as a lot of us do, but I might spend a little bit more time than you commuting. I spend about three hours a day, three hours, three hours, three hours, three hours a day commuting. That That's only going to and from my job. This is not what this is about. I'm basically just explaining why I want to do this kind of format. I'm going to bring different topics to the table. Please uh, forgive me. I'm actually recovering from some kind of cold. I don't think it's the flu, but uh, I'm not feeling too great. I'm committed to doing this for you guys. Anyway, so today is Track Talk one. This is the first time I'm doing this. You're not going to have to watch me this whole time. I'll probably play some footage over here or over there. I'll, I'll be miniature on the bottom corner of the screen. Give you something to look at while I talk about a couple of topics that I'd like to expand upon. Anybody who's interested in doing some track time. I've uh, always been a big <coughs> car gamer. I've always played Gran Turismo, Forza, and all the arcade stuff, like Need for Speed and all that fun stuff. And that's usually always the basis of a kid growing up into a car guy or girl. And some people do it for fun, some people do it because it's their passion. I've always done it because, you know, Gran Turismo was always such a big part of my free driver's license life because I was just collecting cars all the time and driving them and doing this and that. And it just, it's a different perspective uh, than someone who has a poster car and they're like, oh, I want that car when I grow up. It's totally different. Uh, and the reason why is because instead of looking at a car as a piece of artwork, which they are, you see the purpose uh, behind a car and its own functions, driving from A to B or racing. I'm not talking about street racing. I don't believe in street racing. I've known many people that passed away from street racing, whether they were involved or a victim. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about legal controlled street racing. <laughs> yeah, I'll cut that one out. I'm talking about controlled, on track driving, controlled environment, whether it be autocross, or a track day on a circuit, or a motorsports park, or exotic experiences, the supercar experiences that you can rent a Lambo or a Ferrari for like a half hour and drive 40 miles an hour. Um, I guess that might count, not really. But basically, someone who wants to you know, get into performance driving, uh, I highly suggest joining the SCCA. I am a member. Go on to grassrootsmotorsports.com. That is a fantastic hub of information of tons of guys doing all sorts of different builds and documenting it. You know, whether it be a $500 build, a $1,000 build, random builds, classic builds, tons of stuff and information on there. And I absolutely love that website and I subscribe to their magazine. As far as reading goes, uh, the forums is a good number three, but as always, a forum is not your number one place for information. It's a good reference and a good uh, uh, tool, but don't rely on uh, the elbow grease uh, post. <laughs> uh, don't ask where to get that either. On to track talk one. Uh, I know it's like track talk dot one point one. It's kind of like cool looking. Maybe I'll keep that. Maybe I'll change it. Who knows? Let's see if it works for now. Um, so on to the episode. Okay, so I'll do that. You stole my heart of gold after my silver soul. Can you dig in?
Okay, I think the best place to start would be autocross. I know a lot of you may have done it already or may have tried it or watched videos, read about it, and there's always those five people complaining about how they have to work all day long and drive for 40 seconds or three minutes and work for hours on it. Uh, sure, okay, if uh, you're one of those people or I'm sure you know you know some of those people who have read that before, uh, they're totally missing the point. You may disagree with me, but uh, I think you're missing the point because you may be only only driving for 40 seconds or a minute, but the anticipation and that time leading to when you're actually behind the wheel and it's all you, it's a way of igniting that control so that when you're behind the wheel, you can concentrate, you focus, and you go between those cones and you hit the apexes and you do everything right. That's a lot of pressure. And if you can't control that, or if you can't handle that, You'll never be able to do 150 down the straight, uh, you know, on an on a open circuit in the proper way and in control every single time. Yeah, you may get lucky, but it's the focus and the control of your actions uh, that counts here. Autocross is extremely important for that, and I'm a soul believer in that. Uh, soul believer? I'm, am I the only one? I strongly believe you should start at autocross. Uh, the New York region, they do a fantastic job. They have a couple of locations. The calendar is going to come out soon. Comment or, uh, you know, question me on some future updates. Uh, I'll be more than happy to supply you with that information as I'm friends with uh, uh, a lot of uh, the people involved with coordinating that. I think they're great and they've definitely grown in my region in the past couple of years. I, I, I really am proud of those guys for keeping it together and making it grow so much. Uh, it's, it's really something nice to see uh, in this day and age where a lot of people are against anything car related uh, or automotive related, uh, you know, on track or racing or anything of that nature. You know, it's always on the news. A person played a video game and now he shot someone, you know. So I'm very happy to provide that information if you have any questions please comment below shoot me a message and i'll update you on all that you can also go on my facebook page bambino jalo and stay up to date on that uh, i'll be posting their stuff regularly uh, as long as they provide me now this episode is a culmination of some previous footage and newer footage uh, that i took this week and i've combined them now uh, the reason for that is that i recovering from a bad cold and I wasn't feeling too well during most of the filming but uh, that's the reason why just so y'all know y'all y'all you all y'all four important points I'd like to make that should totally encompass your whole mindset for attending any sort of track day whether that be autocross or a track day um, on an open circuit, of course. So number one being your tires. Your tires are by far the most important part. Um, they should be in good health, no less than 50% tread. Hopefully they don't have any plugs or patches and you need to be fully aware of your tire pressure. Depending on the, the drivetrain layout of your car, your tire pressure may vary. I'm not going to say there's a golden rule, every car 35 PSI, all four corners, that's what works. No, not true. Different weight balance, different front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, all wheel drive. A lot of things come into play. There are plenty of resources you can use. Number one being other people that race the same type of car. Uh, you can use as your benchmark and play with the pressures, you know, going up one PSI, down one PSI accordingly, according to your driving style and the way the car feels in your own hands. But typically there is a sweet spot with uh, tire pressure. Usually, you know, two PSI lower to a two PSI higher in that range, you'll be very close. Uh, anything more than that, the need for most a very big difference in handling characteristics. Okay, so number two, alignment. Very important. Uh, yeah, your car may have been aligned a year ago, two years ago, and you claim you don't have any potholes or anything like that but you should always check 
uh, before you start a season. If you have a car that's really just a track car and you don't drive every day, then sure, last year's alignment may be okay. Uh, otherwise, you should start the season with a new alignment, fresh, uh, nice good start and a good benchmark. You can check it when you redo the alignment next time or next year, next season, etc. Number three. <clears throat> now, this one I find very important. Um, and this seems to be a part that a lot of people don't realize and take it for granted really. Um, especially at an autocross event. Uh, a lot of people complain that they are working for 80% of the time and driving 20% of the time and it's boring and blah 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 blah. Well, you know what? Those people are not grasping the whole aspect of autocross, the whole environment. There's a ton to absorb at those events. I definitely think so, you may not agree, but I think the most important thing is watching other drivers. Not only do you watch good drivers, you watch bad drivers, you watch novice drivers, and you watch beginner drivers. And everybody drives different. You can see the good things people do and the bad things people do. And you can learn from both, um, whether it be the same kind of car, the same drivetrain layout, the same exact car, or a different car. It doesn't matter. You can learn something from everyone. So again, number three is watching other people. Number four, and the final point, is yourself. You have to be comfortable with driving your car potentially to its limit if you know its limit. If you don't, this is a good time to explore that, not exploit. Uh, very big difference there. Basically, you should push your car a little bit at a time, not just go all out and turn the wheel 90 degrees and hope for the best. No, that's not what it's about. You should drive the car like you drive it every day and start to push it little by little because again, there's no speed limits, especially on an open circuit. Um, but you can definitely explore your potential and what you can handle versus what the car can handle. And that's a very important part. And that's point number four of this four point thingy that I'm talking about. Oh, it's a traffic cop. We're good. Oh, I didn't do it. I'm just talking to myself. Okay. What's going on here, bro? Thank you all for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and comment below to let me know what you think.